Hey, and welcome back to more political chatter. In this video, we will be talking about the Ron DeSantis presidential campaign and how it is in uh, basically a presidential campaign form of hospice care. It cannot survive much longer. So Ron DeSantis announced his candidacy uh, back in when? I don't even know. Uh, back in May, late May. And even uh, from the time, you know, before he announced his candidacy, you know, from the beginning of the year to now, he has only gone downhill. It has, this campaign has been nothing but negative news for the DeSantis campaign. He has never been able to gain anywhere. Uh, Ron DeSantis was once seen, um, we should have some polls up here, he was once seen as a serious contender. Uh, for the this Republican nomination. And when you went through the early states, it really looked like Ron DeSantis was going to be the Republican nominee. At its closest point was, um, um, this is about, like, uh, we'll say, um, early 2023. Uh, Trump was at 43, DeSantis at 28, still, um, you know, 15-point margin, but pretty close. In New Hampshire, um, this one goes up to April, but it, DeSantis was leading in New Hampshire at one point to give you a sense of how um, how close this race actually was. But ever since then, Ron DeSantis has only fallen. His campaign has just been one huge blunder. You know, he joins the race um, right about here, and as you can see, he's already on the decline, and he continues to go on the decline, and right now, he's at 11.3%, Nikki Haley is at just 11, when, look at, you know, how it used to be, Haley was never even above 10, and, um, and while DeSantis was at, like, 30, and now, uh, Haley is about to surpass DeSantis, and I think that it'll happen soon, given the trajectory of where things are going. So, Ron DeSantis has just fumbled this this campaign. I mean, obviously, it's something with how he ran this campaign. He clearly did not have a good team running. It's one of just one of the worst presidential campaigns uh, ever run. So, it is a huge part, um, a huge, uh, you know, many mistakes from his end. And also, the indictments of Donald Trump certainly did not help DeSantis. That only helped Trump in this Republican primary. It really encouraged his base to be more enthusiastic and gained him a lot of support, uh, as, you know, we have seen in poll after poll. Uh, but DeSantis, on the other hand, never had anything like indictments or any event that would boost his campaign. Um... Nikki Haley, on the other hand, you know, she's rising because, here's her alone, she's rising because she had those debates. I mean, um, she was always, um, let's see, yeah, okay, uh, she was always at, like, 4%. Um, her highest was, like, 7 when she announced her candidacy, but she's always at, like, 4%. But since then, since the debates, she has been able to climb more than double her numbers. At her peak, she was at 12. Today, she is at 11 um, and these debates have really been able to help her. Uh, I mean, she's the only one that, ha besides Trump, that has received any sort of boost in this campaign. So, um, you know, Nikki Haley had some that would boost her campaign. No other candidate has, especially DeSantis. He has only been attacked by Trump. He has only just been, um you know, parodied by whatever. He's been made fun of, essentially, um, because of how miserable his campaign seems to be going. And this only further proves this point. Uh, never back down this so, 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 so influential um, super PAC that was supporting his campaign. 
uh, Never Back Down was created before DeSantis even announced his presidency. DeSantis might not have even announced his candidacy in the first place if Never Back Down had never been created if it didn't have this giant war chest that he could use for his campaign. But Never Back Down is canceling $2.5 million worth of 2024 ads. Um, and... I mean, that, you know, that alone proves that they are out of money, don't want to spend anything more on this campaign. And it's not going good on the inside, either. Um, there is so, so, so much uh, drama and problems among the uh, Never Back Down leaders, um, in, you know, um, with uh, the actual Ron DeSantis for President campaign team. They apparently they're disagreeing on where to spend ads, whether or not they abandon New Hampshire. But there are all of these problems inside Never Back Down. Um, the chief strategist for Never Back Down has resigned. That was a few days ago. And we have had so many resignations in Never Back Down. They are just done with this campaign. They know it's not going anywhere. And I mean, it makes total sense. He is not going anywhere in this campaign. So, um, they're canceling ads. Their staff, uh, are, the staffing is in total disarray. There's problems, issues, disputes in the campaign and in Never Back Down. So, it's definitely uh, not looking good. I don't know just how long. The question is how long this could keep going. You know, so right now, I think that Ron DeSantis is just not even betting big on Iowa, but praying for an okay result in Iowa so that his campaign can get going. Um, Iowa is the only state where uh, he where he's doing, you know, somewhat well. Um, I Iowa is one of his best states in the nation because he has been... He has been spending a lot of money in Iowa, um, but still, it's like, how much could you even bet on Iowa? Because if we have polling up here, the average is Trump is above 50%. He's at 52, uh, or let's go, yeah, he's at 51 on the average, compared to DeSantis at 18, and then Nikki Haley is at 15, just, just three points behind him um, in Iowa, but I mean... It's still such a large margin for Trump, 32. He would have to really outperform all of these polls that are never showing him above 20%. I mean, they just never are um, in these recent polls. And he would have to outperform all of these polls to have some sort of boost in his campaign. But still, you've got to ask the question, even if he were to surprise some people, win these uh, evangelical voters in Iowa, and obviously not win, that's out of the realm of possibility, but have a solid performance in Iowa going into New Hampshire, it's really a question of how much that even matters, because we head over to New Hampshire, the second primary state, and you've got DeSantis not in second, not in third, he's in fourth place, fifth, behind Vivek Ramaswamy in some polls, but on average, he is at 7.6%. That's fourth place in the state of New Hampshire. That is just abysmal. And now you see um, uh, the dispute, you know, among Never Back Down and the DeSantis campaign on whether or not to abandon New Hampshire. And it appears that they are now. They are putting all of their little funds that they have left into Iowa, hoping for a good performance in Iowa, not wanting to waste a single cent in New Hampshire where they know that they cannot win. But Chris Christie is ahead of DeSantis in New Hampshire. If that is the um, result, if he does stay in by Iowa, after Iowa, until New Hampshire, I don't see how he could possibly last uh, after the state of New Hampshire. I mean, he is just not surviving after a 7.6% performance in New Hampshire behind Chris Christie, someone who was ridiculed by the entire GOP, someone who was just laughed at by um, the Republican Party. And that would just be completely embarrassing 
for DeSantis if he were to stay in the race after New Hampshire. So I don't even know what the point is um, if, you know, staying after Iowa. Because even if he were to hit, you know, he's at, he's at um, 18 in Iowa. Even if he were to hit 25 um, in Iowa, which isn't going to happen because that's a seven point over performance. Let's say it all comes from Trump. Let's say Trump winish, finishes with um, 45 percent. Then that's still a 20 point margin from for Trump. And when you think about it, I mean, you know, a 20 point margin for Trump compared to a 32 point margin for Trump, which is what polls are predicting right now. How, really, how many votes will it even sway in the state of New Hampshire? If you're at eight percent, not even close um, to Trump, who's at forty-four, or Haley, who's at twenty-five. Um, you know, he's only close to Christie, to Chris Christie, who has no shot at being the nominee, who's at eleven. So, um, it's. You know, DeSantis would need to, like, win uh, Iowa for him to have any chance at becoming this nominee, to have any momentum heading into South Carolina and Nevada, um, Super Tuesday, most importantly. He would have to win Iowa because, because that is the only way he would gain some significant support in New Hampshire. Even if it was, like, a, a very close race in Iowa, which won't happen, um, even if that were the case, he would still not be in a good position in New Hampshire. It's like, how many voters can that possibly affect, um, you know, him coming close in Iowa? Really not many when you think about it, especially now many minds are set. The governor of New Hampshire has already endorsed Nikki Haley. It's kind of over, um, well, for DeSantis, at least, and Chris Christie in New Hampshire, they haven't been able to gain. But, um, look where DeSantis used to be. You know, he used to be so close. But not anymore. So, again, um, this campaign is not looking good at all. I mean, just so much of his support has gone to Nikki Haley now and Donald Trump. I mean, especially, especially Donald Trump through these months, through these debates, where the debates are only helping Trump through the indictments and everything. Donors leaving DeSantis for Trump, donors leaving DeSantis for Haley. It's um, really over for DeSantis, and that is his campaign update. We could say goodbye to him. And, you know, this ad cancellation, that's really when you know things are going bad. Vivek Ramaswamy just did the same thing. He will be done soon. I might make, make a video about that, too. So thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed. Um, I don't know if DeSantis will stay in until New Hampshire. Uh, but whatever, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.